Hello, and thank you for joining Flexera for the release of Vulnerability Review 2018 Top Desktop Applications. My name is Marcelo Pereira. I'm Product Marketing Manager for Flexera Solutions for Managing Software Vulnerabilities. I'm broadcasting out of our office in Copenhagen. Copenhagen is the birthplace of Sequini Research and also the house of the largest number of the members of the Sequini Research team. Those guys, they provide the intelligence that is behind our software vulnerability management products, and they also provide the data that feeds into uh, uh, our reports. To give you an idea of what these guys do, so they have been 14 years researching, disclosing, documenting vulnerabilities, and they're market leaders in all this period. They track over 55,000 products, and they deliver at least 95% of the alerts on new vulnerabilities within one day. So let's go back to this report. Uh, top Desktop Applications is a new edition of Vulnerability Review. Earlier this year, we released uh, uh, Vulnerability Review Global Trends. So Global Trends look at all those applications that Secunia Research tracks and delivers information about the vulnerability landscape as it relates to all of those uh, uh, vulnerabilities. The Top Desktop Applications gives insight into a subset of the intelligence as it relates to the most common uh, desktop applications. So you must be asking, but what are top desktop applications? I'll just give you an idea of what it is. So top desktop applications are the most common desktop applications, the 50 most common desktop applications. How do we get that information? So uh, uh, we get that from users, from users of our product, PSI. And we look at those machines. And what we see is, on average, uh, uh, a Windows desktop would have 70 applications. We focus and we look at that data and we focus on the 50 most common applications in those Windows systems. What we know, for example, is that uh, amongst those 50 uh, uh, most common applications, 65% are Microsoft applications and 35% are non-Microsoft uh, applications. The full list is here on this slide, but you know you can just get it from the report. By the way, you can also in the description of this video, you have the link so you can just go on. The report is already live. Uh, you can uh, uh, download that and start getting that information. So, but why does this report matter to you? Why would you uh, be interested in this report? First, because it gives the picture of vulnerabilities and security patches as they relate to the most common desktop applications that uh, most likely all of us are managing. It also helps understanding how to deal with security patching, and it also can counter some of the beliefs that, uh, 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 that we have that security patching is too complicated. I mean, of course there are challenges with security patching, but, uh, you know, it's not uh, uh, exactly like that. We, when you understand the data, when you have the knowledge, when you have this intelligence, you can really think and devise your strategies and actually improve the way uh, you're dealing with uh, uh, software vulnerabilities. Now, let's have a look, for example, on something uh, about the top 50. If we look at the top 50 applications, the first thing that we can see is that and you don't need to read any of this, but basically the data that is in there shows that 28 of these top 50 applications did not have uh, uh, any vulnerability reported in the past year. So 22 out of 50 uh, 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 had vulnerabilities. 
And we issued uh, 147 advisories for all of those applications. To give you uh, a measure of, of this figure, Secundio Research issued 3,266 advisories in the same period for all applications. So for the top 50, 147. That means it's a manageable number. It's a manageable number in a period of one year that 147 advisories are issued for those top uh, 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 50 uh, uh, applications on desktop. So if we look another data point here as it relates to patches. So patches were available for those vulnerabilities for 94% of those vulnerabilities within one day of the disclosure. And, and after 30 days, this number gets to 97%. So that means really uh, 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 the vast majority of those desktop vulnerabilities could be patched. Why does it matter that those patches are available within the first day of disclosure? It matters because we also know from research that the first exploitation of desktop applications in general happens within happens on day 30 of disclosure. It's when after disclosure the hackers have time to go and produce uh, an exploit and put it in a kit and all of that so that uh, 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 an attack can be launched. So if for the majority of the vulnerabilities, a patch is available within one day. If you have a process to actually apply those patches through a certain period of time, uh, uh, you close them before the likelihood of exploitation happens. Let's look another data point from the review. That is a very important point. So the issue of known Microsoft applications. If you remember when we uh, uh, first looked uh, uh, this data, when we started talking about it, I was saying that if we look at Windows uh, desktop, in general, 65% of the top 50 applications are Microsoft applications, and 35% are non-Microsoft applications. When we look at the share of vulnerabilities, it's flipped. So 65% of the vulnerabilities in the past year affected non-Microsoft applications. So what it tells us is that when you're doing your Microsoft patching, of course it's important and it's good that you're doing that. At the same time, just doing your Microsoft patching is not enough. If you're just patching your Microsoft applications, you're leaving a large number of vulnerabilities out there that uh, 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 hackers can exploit. So I'm not going to talk that much. I mean, the, the purpose of this broadcast was really to bring you uh, a taste of vulnerability reviews for you to download. But the reason to read this is really vulnerability review helps with this visibility with the understanding of the vulnerability landscape for desktops in a way that uh, 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 you can read that information and understand how to devise your strategies. So one thing from the takeaways is that, uh, and it's not here, you'll find it in the review, 83% uh, of the vulnerabilities in the top 50 were considered highly or extremely critical. So that means to give you a measure of that, if we look at the global trends, that figure is 17%. On top desktop applications, 83% were highly or extremely critical, which shows that it's important to address those vulnerabilities on the top desktop applications. The next point is what we just talked about, patching Microsoft applications is just not enough. When you're doing your Microsoft patching only, you're closing 35% of the vulnerabilities. And the last point is that you can patch. So what this review should help you uh, uh, articulating or understanding 
is that you can patch. It's ultimately about the process. So, and the, the review proposes that the way forward is looking at security performance indicators for operations. I mean, it's very common. We have conversations with operations professionals all the time, and one of the things that is super common, uh, prevalent, I would say, is that there are no security uh, uh, performance indicators for ops. And if there is no security indicator, there is no performance indicator for security for, for someone, why would that be a priority? So to make it a priority, it's necessary. That it's important to solve the issue of sources of inventory, accurate, not only accurate, but capable of providing the patch status, you know, because one of the things that is difficult is, okay, you have an inventory, it doesn't have enough information uh, 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 then you have to do additional research to find out whether there is a vulnerability or not. So a source of inventory that can give you that information is really important. And lastly, and the most important thing, having the security uh, patching process. So having said that, you can go on and download the report on uh, www.flexera.com slash VR. 2018 TDA, or use the link that is in the description of this video. Um, you will also get an invite for a webinar. So Casper Lingard, who is the head of Sekuni Research, will be speaking to those numbers in depth uh, on a webinar in July. And you can also uh, read the information on the report. So thank you very much for joining us today. And I hope to be speaking to you soon. Thank you.